It's time for America Outdoors Radio, the show that covers the outdoor scene across the U.S. of A. and the entire continent. Fishing, hunting, conservation, outdoor recreation, and great destinations, we cover it all every week. It's your country, your outdoors. Let's explore it together with your host, John Cruz. Do you have kids who are in school? Maybe I should say who are not in school this week because quite a few schools around the nation are having their spring break right now. And after a couple days, you may hear those kids say, I'm bored, which is probably making you wonder how you are ever going to get through the summer. Well, I've got a suggestion for those kids. It's called summer camp. That's right. You remember summer camp and... I think my kids have actually grown to love it. I send my kids to a place called Tall Timber Ranch every summer. At least uh, my son went there until he was an adult. My daughter's 14. She's been going for, this will be her seventh year. It's a wonderful place. It's in Washington's Cascade Mountains. There's rafting, there's hiking, there's canoeing, there's horseback riding, and of course, time around the fire and friendships that last for years. And you'll find that not at just church camps, like the one I send my kids to, but at YMCA camps, state fish and wildlife agencies put on conservation camps all over the nation, and don't forget nonprofit organizations that put together both day camps and multi-day camps, a lot of them focusing on the outdoors. You want some other ideas for summer camps? Well, the Boy Scouts put some on. I know I had a great time when I was a Boy Scout. I'd do things like go canoeing, shoot the 22 rifle at the range, archery was always involved, hiking, of course, and a whole bunch of outdoors camped craft. And I'm pretty sure... And you know what? The Girl Scouts and Campfire Girls, they've got camps too, and they're just as fun... So get your kids into camp this summer, sign them up now, and let them experience the great outdoors during their big break from school. Let's talk about what we've got for you on the show this week. If you're an elk hunter and want to put the odds of success in your favor, you might do well to target an animal from the largest elk herd in the entire world. You'll find that herd in the mountains of Colorado, and High Timber Outfitters will tell you about their pack trips to take you to them in just a couple of minutes. Speaking of hunting, waterfowl hunters are facing a looming crisis. The numbers of migrating ducks and geese winging their way south every year is trending up, but the number of hunters shooting them in the U.S. and Canada is going way down. Joel Bryce with Delta Waterfowl will tell you more about this big problem facing the future of duck and goose hunting and what you can do to help reverse it. Kelly Hawley with Tom and Jerry's Boat Center out of northwestern Washington has got the prototype of a 34-foot welded aluminum boat from Kingfisher that may be gracing the waters off the Pacific Northwest and beyond in big numbers very soon. And we'll also tell you about some rifle targets that go kaboom when you hit them. Throw in some outdoors news about upcoming Sportsman Show and a roundup of the odds-on favorites to win the Bassmaster Classic, an important firearms recall affecting owners of the Walther 9mm concealed carry pistol and the story of a man attacked by a wild turkey and who got cited for it in the end. And I'd say we've got quite a show coming your way. And with that, let's head to the Mountain West for some elk hunting. Next up on America Outdoors Radio, we thought we'd tell you about an incredible place to go elk hunting here in North America. You're going to find it near Meeker in northwest Colorado, and the folks that are going to take you there are High Timber Outfitters. With us here to tell you more about it is Martin Lanfear and John Malakar. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So let's talk about this here. I understand, Martin, that if folks come to hunt with you and they're going to go out there either on a guided hunt or you're going to do drop camps for them, that they basically, you're putting them right in the middle of the largest elk herd in the entire world. So exactly how many elk are there, John? Well, in Unit 24, estimated elk herd up there is 45,000 plus elk. We figured it, doing the math and everything, five elk per acre. On that ratio up there, out of every 100 elk, you're going to see there's going to be 28 bulls in that 100 elk. That 
is an incredible ratio, especially when you take a look at several places here in the Northwest. Where well, you're looking at ratios as low as five bulls for a hundred elk. Uh, that is really fantastic. So let's talk about the size of these elk. Well, the size of our elk, we run from you know typical 280 to you know 325 class bull. Uh, we do have 350 plus bulls up there. Little, little harder to get to, but they're there and they're screaming all the time in archery and muzzleloader season. So, John, continuing with you, uh, let's talk about your seasons. Uh, so, you have an archery season, you have a general rifle season, you have a muzzleloader season. What's the time frame we're looking at here? Well, our season our starts with archery season. It runs from the end of August through the end of September. It's a month long season. We break it into uh, four seven day hunts. And that two weeks into the archery season, muzzleloader season starts. It runs for a week long. And then starting in October, around the 14th of October, our first rifle season starts. And our first rifle runs five days. Then we have a second rifle and a third rifle, which you can buy the tags for them over the counter. That means anybody can show up. They're there. They don't have to draw. And then our fourth rifle season, which runs about mid-November, that's a limited draw only also. When does the rut usually take place there in northwest Colorado? Well, the rut usually takes place about the end of archery season, right in the middle of uh, muzzleloader season there. And then you usually catch a second rut about first rifle season. All right. So it sounds like tags can be pretty easy to get, so that's great to know. Lots of opportunity with 45,000 elk and a great bull-to-cow ratio. Martin, let's turn our attention to you and talk about how folks are going about this. So this is a horse pack operation and a drop camp or a guided operation as well. Yes, you can do uh, you can do both. We can take you out uh, on a guided hunt, or we can take you out with a group of your buddies to a to a drop camp. You're looking at uh, a charge of uh, twenty five hundred, which we're real proud of. It's a very affordable price. The average guy can can uh, accomplish that. You know, you do bring your own food. You can prepare it at home. You can do the mountain house food, but it's uh, it's a very nice, comfortable camp. You have all the amenities that, that you need there. You bring your uh, yourself, your buddies, your hunting gear, and, and get ready for a good time. So, John, uh, when, when it comes to these hunts, you know, you can do it self-guided or you can do it guided. Uh, I'm guessing that a guided hunt, you have a much greater chance for success, don't you? Yeah, on our guided hunts, uh, I've done all the guides for the last three years up there, and the success rate with me guiding was 100% in the last three years. That's fantastic. And when it comes to self-guided hunts, it probably really depends on the hunter. They've got to do some things to be successful. They've got to be in shape because you're hunting in the high country. They've got to do things like know how to sight in a rifle and being able to shoot it accurately. And they probably need to get up early and get out there in the woods while it's still dark. Oh, absolutely. Physical fitness is a, is a big key up there. We range anywhere from 8,000 to 11,000 feet in elevation. Somebody coming from 700 feet in elevation, which, you know, here, it's a little tough to breathe up there. You know, a couple of days advanced, you know, coming out there, getting used to the elevation works great. Biggest key if you're doing it on their own is, you know, they got to be able to get up in the morning, got to be able to go hunting. They, you, you can't sit in camp. You're not going to see them that way. One other thing we need to talk about here is in addition to the hunting, you are starting to offer some backcountry fishing as well. Quite a few trout species to target in both streams and lakes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have... Uh, South Fork of the White River up there is where we do our fishing out of. We're, we're picking up a couple of lakes also. Our lakes up there, we have uh, bro- they have uh, brookie trout in them. You know, our brooks range anywhere from 12 to 16 inches. Nice pan-sized pink meat, good eating. In the river up there, we have uh, brown trout, we have few native trout, and we have rainbow trout. Our rainbows up there are running anywhere from 4.5 to 6 pounds. All right, so most folks are going to be heading to High Timber Outfitters over near Meeker, Colorado for the elk, but don't forget some excellent trout fishing as well. If you want to get back in the wilderness on a pack trip, you can do it, whether you want to go fishing or whether you want to go hunting. Sounds like the trip of a lifetime in northwest Colorado. Martin, why don't you give out a website so folks can find out more? Okay, you can find us at hightimberoutfitters.com, or you can call us at 970-363-HUNT. That's 970-363-HUNT. Again, 970-363-HUNT. Or just go to HighTimberOutfitters.com. Again, High Timber Outfitters is going to give you some great opportunities to get a crack at the largest elk herd in the entire world. Or, if you prefer, go out there for some great fishing in the high mountains of Colorado. Gentlemen, thanks for sharing this with us on America Outdoors Radio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Have you wondered where to get your bolt carrier groups and barrels for the AR-15? Maybe you're looking for a quality 9mm bolt carrier. Spinta Precision is your source. Whether you're plinking, target shooting, or running a three-gun match, Spinta Precision has what you need. Every product is American-made by Patriots for Patriots. Visit us at SpintaPrecision.com. That's SpintaPrecision.com for top-quality bolt carriers and barrels. D.M. Bullard Leather has been in business for over 20 years. We use Herman Oak Leather to make concealed and open carry gun holsters, as well as knife sheaths, belts, cowboy gear, and wallets. All of our products are handmade, and we even offer exotic skins if you're looking for something really special. Check out our products in 16 different gun shops, or go to our website at dmbuller.com. That's dmbuller.com for the best leather you will ever have. Oregon's Tillamook Bay is considered the greatest fishing experience on the West Coast for fall Chinook salmon and winter steelhead, and Dungeness crab is plentiful. Five major rivers connect with the ocean on the Tillamook Coast. It's not unusual to snag a 40 to 50 pounder, go out in a boat, or stand on a riverbank or dock. Try fishing from a dory boat and experience the thrill of a beach launch and landing. Use spinners, sand shrimp, or salmon eggs to lure them. The fish will line up to grab your bait. Go to TillamookCoast.com fishing to find guides and places to stay. Tom and Jerry's Boat Center in Mount Vernon is Washington's largest Hughes Craft and Kingfisher aluminum boat dealer. As a leader in sales, service, and fun on the water, Tom and Jerry's only purpose is to make sure you end up with the right boat for your family's needs at a price that will make you smile. Whether it's a new Hughes Craft or Kingfisher or a new Yamaha or Honda outboard, Tom and Jerry's can take care of all your needs. Check us out at TomAndJerry's.net and we'll see you on the water. You're back with America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. This portion of the show is brought to you by Northwest Sportsman Magazine. Andy Walgabot is the editor of this monthly publication. He and his writers do a great job of covering the hunting, fishing, and boating scene throughout the greater Northwest. Look for it at a newsstand near you. Speaking of the Northwest, that's where we're heading for this segment. We're talking to Kelly Hawley. He's with Tom and Jerry's Boat Center out of Washington State. Kelly, great to have you back on the show. Hey, it's great to be here. Thank you. So, Kelly, I know that that one of the lines that you sell there are Kingfisher all-welded aluminum boats, and you actually have a prototype of a brand new 34-foot offshore model. Tell our listeners more about it. Oh man, I tell you, that is a beautiful boat. <laughs> we uh, we debuted it at the uh, Seattle Boat Show, so a few people saw that boat there. They call it a offshore 3425, and it is a 34-foot boat. The funny thing about it is when they started this whole project, it was only going to be a 32-foot boat, but then they started making places for people to do this and people to do that, and voila. 34 footer so it's just one of those boats that uh, they designed for the customer from the ground up Uh, they did a great job the way that it's laid out the room the storage is just unbelievable and the one we have right now the one that was at the boat show that had triple yamaha 300s on it oh my gosh you can say that again that thing flew they had it in the water and it would do about 60 miles an hour. It would just absolutely fly. Now, that might be a little fast for most people. You know, the <laughs> perfect for that boat is actually a couple twin 300s. But, you know, there's always that guy out there that just wants to be the first. Oh, yes. And uh, this boat is for him. <laughs> well, the, the, so it's a beautiful boat. Oh, it sure is. And the thing that really stood out for me, I was, I was looking on the website at it, is how huge the cockpit is on this boat it takes up a lot of space there but there's still ample space on the rear deck to fight fish and do what you need to do oh yeah it's got ample space for sure you can have a party back there and still have room to bring as many fish in as you want uh yeah a lot of room and the nice thing about it not only do you have a lot of room right there in the back in the cockpit but the front is unbelievable down in the cuddy and and the head is roomy the the seating everything on it is just top notch 
So they, they did a great job on it. Well, and I noticed there, there's a lot of creature comforts. You got the, the queen bed in the in the cuddy cabin, uh, but they've also got things like a fridge. You've got a big water tank. I mean, lots of room to store fish. I mean, this is really made for multi-day expeditions, or I could also see six-pack charter boat operators really wanting one of these. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, that's the nice thing about it. It's kind of made for just about anything. You know, they really they really concentrate on the fishermen. You know, the fishermen kind of drives this industry in the heavy gauge market. And so they want to make sure that all the features will do everything that the guy that wants to go out and fish, whether he's just a seasonal fisherman or whether he's a year-round fisherman, like we have so many blackmouth fishermen up here, you know, they just want to to be comfortable and, and give you enough room and do the job that you want to do. You know, you can get into the real big, and I don't call this a yacht. You know, some people might call a, a glass boat in a 34-footer a yacht. But this is a fisherman's boat with the creature comforts that the women or your partners or whatever are just they're going to like. They're going to enjoy this. If you want to go out and stay somewhere, you can do it comfortably. You know, a lot of people this time of year, they might go, well, especially coming into halibut season, sure. they'll go across the border. Well, you know what? You go over, you stay the night. Comfort, it's the only way to go. Well, and I'm going to go out on a limb and make a prediction here that you're going to start seeing some of those Alaska fishing lodges and some, some guides and charters in Puget Sound start picking up these boats. This would also, even on the non-fishing side, you know, if you were a guy that wanted to offer like whale watching tours around the San Juans, I mean, this is really a great looking and comfortable boat that'll get a lot of things done out on the water. Yeah, it will. It'll carry a lot of people and, and it'll get you there in those seas, especially if you're going out, you know, CQ, Westport and those areas, you know, a lot of these charter guys, it's perfect for that. So, because it'll handle the weather that you're going to get. I mean, of course, it gets pretty nasty where nobody wants to be out there, but, you know, then you stay inside and have some bacon and eggs or something. So, <laughs> down at the marina. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about something else. I mean, clearly, uh, this is a beautiful boat, but, you know, the 34 foot Kingfisher might be out of the price range for some folks. And I know that some of the folks listening today, they're looking at buying their first big boat. And and I know a lot of them probably have some trepidation in terms of going to the boat dealer and having that Chevy Chase vacation experience where they, they've asked for one thing and they get something entirely different and they end up not being happy. How do you avoid yeah. that? How do you avoid that? Well, it's training, really. It, it's training your your team, your your crew members here, the salespeople, everybody, to make sure that when they are dealing with a customer, you know, especially one that comes in that not quite sure what they want, you have to interview them. You have to find out how they're going to use it, what they're going to do with it, where they're going to go, who's going to be driving it, what kind of conditions. Are they a year-round fisherman or just a seasonal fisherman? It's just a process, you know, and, and if you do your job properly – as far as the dealership goes, then you're not going to have any issues. The people are going to buy that boat. It's a big purchase. It is. And I'm really glad you said that, Kelly, because I, I've been to boat dealerships and I've certainly been to car dealerships where the salesman comes out and you can tell they're pushing a certain model and they really don't care what you want. They're pushing a certain model because their boss right. is telling them to push a certain model. So, so the fact that you're training your staff to actually do an interview and listen to what the customer is and help them figure out the best boat for their needs, that goes miles. Well, that's the only way to do it. I mean, there's nothing worse than having a customer upset because they bought the wrong boat, you know, or didn't have the right power. It's underpowered. Nobody ever complains about being overpowered, but, you know, there's some dealers out there, they'll put the smallest motor on that they can and sell it that way because the price is right. But at the end of the day, when the customer takes it and they're not happy, that comes back on the dealership. So you want to make sure that that customer is, is pleased with their purchase and they're not having second thoughts. Well, you know, Kelly, Tom and Jerry's got a great reputation in the Northwest as a, as a boat dealer. But for the consumers that are listening out there uh, that may not be in a position to necessarily go to your dealership, what advice would you give them before they walk onto the lot so they can have a good experience in terms of, you know, arming themselves with some knowledge beforehand? Well, have a clear idea on how you're going to use it and what you're going to do with it and who's going to use it, you know, first of all. And then, you know, when you do go in, and most most boat dealers, I mean, they're all 
pretty darn good. You know, it's not like some of the other industries out there where you, some people are just in it to make a quick buck. Your salespeople and, and most boat dealers, they do a good job for the most part. But you want to make sure that you know what you're getting, you know how much you want to spend, and go in armed, ready to take a look at a couple different boats. Don't look at too many of them because it'll get confusing. If you look at more than three, and, and sometimes they start meshing together and, and just makes it a little bit tougher. So get an idea on size, what's going to fit in your garage if you're going to be trailering it and start there and just sit down instead of going out and looking at all the boats you might just go in and sit down with a salesperson and and say hey this is what i want to do and and let him do his interview and and find out just what boat's going to work best for you all right sounds like some great advice let's tell folks exactly where tom and jerry's is and let's give out the website too we're in mount vernon we're on the way to anacoris on highway 20 our website is tomandjerrys.net so you're more than welcome to go there we keep it up to date so you can see what we have all right again folks that's tomandjerrys.net tom the letter n jerrys.net or check out their dealership it's located about an hour north of seattle not too far off of interstate five kelly thanks for the great advice and thanks for previewing this brand new boat from kingfisher it sounds fantastic hey thank you we appreciate it Tom and Jerry's Boat Center in Mount Vernon is Washington's largest Hughes Craft and Kingfisher aluminum boat dealer. As a leader in sales, service, and fun on the water, Tom and Jerry's only purpose is to make sure you end up with the right boat for your family's needs at a price that will make you smile. Whether it's a new Hughes Craft or Kingfisher or a new Yamaha or Honda outboard, Tom and Jerry's can take care of all your needs. Check us out at TomandJerry's.net and we'll see you on the water. Looking for the safest, most stable riding boat on the market? Welcome to Stabycraft. Born in New Zealand, Stabycraft has a built-in reputation for making the most seaworthy boats on the market. Heavy gauge aluminum chambered boats with models ranging from 14 to 29 feet in a variety of configurations to suit all your needs. Check out the all-new 2750 Center Cab, a walk-around design for the Northwest market and packed with industry-leading features to suit all types of fishing, allowing you to adventure with confidence. Book a test ride today at Stabycraft.com. Welcome back to America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. We've got a very interesting guest for you. His name is Joel Bryce. He's the Vice President of Waterfowl and Hunter Recruitment Programs with Delta Waterfowl, a very well-known organization that's involved with conservation when it comes to ducks, and they also advocate for duck hunting, too. Joel, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, Joel, very interesting conundrum we find ourselves in is waterfowl hunters over the last few years. And there was a great article that was published by Delta Waterfowl called The Looming Crisis because opportunities in terms of the number of waterfowl present and their populations has been very, very positive. It's been way up over the last few years. However, the number of hunters participating has gone way down. How bad is this problem? Well, you, you would think that with more opportunity in terms of, of duck, duck numbers or goose numbers, you'd think that, that hunters would just rise to that bait, so to speak. And, and for many, many years, that was the case when duck numbers would rebound with wet conditions on the breeding grounds. Duck hunter numbers would, would follow after that trending together. But basically what we've seen is a separation of that trend. You know, if you go back to the late 1990s, early 2000s, when duck numbers were at at a record at that time, we've definitely seen hunters slipping the other direction. So that is concern. And that's happening in both the United States and Canada where Delta operates. So I understand that for the second time in 78 years, waterfowl hunter numbers have slipped below 1 million in the United States. And we're looking at only, and this surprised me, only about 167,000 waterfowl hunters in all of Canada. Is this true? <laughs> yeah, isn't that interesting? I'm, I'm originally from Wisconsin, and when I thought of Canada, I thought of 
every Canadian um, lives in the Great White North. Every Canadian hunts, traps, fishes, but that's certainly not the case. And they have experienced a decline way more significant than we have. You know, as U.S. hunters, it, uh, it's kind of scary when your neighbor is experiencing such steep declines. Oh, it is. But it's not like we're doing great either. And what was the number? Was it 2.3 million waterfowl hunters at the, the height of it all in the 1970s? Is that how many we got to? Yeah, 2.03 million in 1970 was, was about the peak there. Right now, um, you know, we're below a million, like you said. But I think a more reasonable peak, about 1997, looking at about 1.4 million hunters, that's when I think when there was a huge surge in duck numbers, continental duck numbers. And so, yeah, certainly duck hunters came back in response to that. But again, they didn't quite reach the level that uh, they did during previous duck peaks. And so I think, you know, what it's pointed to all of us and probably what's what's uh, jumping out to you too is what's impacting the number of duck hunters isn't, it's no longer how many ducks are there because there's a lot there right now. So why is this happening? I think it's a discussion that people are having all over the country. It's happening in duck blinds at duck camps. It's happening at hunting conferences. You know, why are hunters dropping away? And I think one of the biggest things that seems to override is obviously we could blame technology. We could blame changing family dynamics, changing social structure, youth athletics, iPads, computers, cable TV. And I think all that certainly plays a role. But I think even at the more uh, mature level, the adult hunter, you know, you do see hunters dropping in and out. And the thing that comes out for the for the older hunter is access and opportunity. Sure. Um, for, I'm not sure what it's like where you are. Hunting has changed a lot here in North Dakota in terms of access. But when I look at um, friends of mine that live and hunt in the deep south of the United States, you know, it's all about a lease, an expensive lease, um, and then also even on public ground. There's just a, a lot of competition. So I think people just make choices based on, on what they're experiencing. How easy is it to go out there? And when I'm out there, am I having uh, an area to myself? Am, am I having a difficult time finding a spot? And again, you know, I think that stress or, or pressure, we all reach our own conclusion, our own decisions. Well, Joel, I think you're absolutely right. And I've, I've been telling people for years that the most competitive hunters you're going to find, uh, hands down, are duck hunters, especially when it comes to opening day. In my neck of the woods in the northwest, uh, there's some public hunting grounds where people will literally go out a week in advance to set up camp, set up their blinds, and basically lay claim to a spot that they think is going to be good for the opener. It's it's serious business, and it and you're right for the the casual waterfowler who goes out for opening day or maybe two or three times a year. It gets a little intimidating. It gets a little tough to have that quality experience that they grew up with. But that that's the other part of this, isn't it? Is not just access, not just opportunity, uh, but also recruitment. We're not doing a very good job as in our generation of bringing the next generation up to become duck and goose hunters, are we? No, no, we're definitely not. It, you know, I think if you just look at it in a very simple and logical uh, manner, all we've ever had to do is replace ourselves. That's it. Just find one other person to take up the sport or the privilege of hunting before you leave yourself. And it sounds so simple to do that, but I think fundamentally we all have a little battle with ourselves where we have to, you know, we go out and we crave a duck marsh to ourselves or we crave uh, a mountainside to ourselves. And so I think internally we're all a little conflicted. Do we really want more hunters? So the answer is yes and the answer is no. But uh, I think selfishly, maybe we don't, but hunting needs to have well we need to have we need to have a voice we need to have a body of people that can that can fight off or promote or defend off um things that aren't good for the future hunting so yeah it's uh we definitely need more hunters we need to be more involved and we need to think bigger than I don't want somebody on that march with me. Sure. And, you know, a lot of states, they, they have youth seasons now, and especially bringing up my kids, I've really taken advantage of those. They're, they're great mentoring events, and they really do get 
a kid hooked on the sport of waterfowl hunting in an unpressured setting. So uh, kudos to the states that are doing that. And I know that Delta Waterfowl has got a first hunt program that is doing something similar. Uh, But what are some other ways we can reverse this trend? And unfortunately, we've only got about a minute left to talk about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I mean, there's the 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 easy way of just supporting groups that, that go out and, and, and do hunter recruitment efforts or advocate, you know, for easier hunting opportunities. But yeah, I think just to get off the couch, get out there, take somebody hunting. And that, and that sounds so, so easy. I mean, it just try to pass that passion on. For me, one of the big things that, and I have two kids, 10 and seven. And one of the things that I've done with taking my kids out is, we all want to say that technology is the demise of hunting and, and nobody wants to go hunting anymore. I've actually kind of embraced it. I allow the kids to bring their iPads or their little video game thing. Um, I allow them to bring it with during that time when a little kid should be bored. <laughs> and I get them through some of that stuff. And then when that excitement happens, they don't want their iPad anymore. They get hooked. And right. so as they get older... And they're the one that actually gets to go out there and pick up the duck or blow the call or, or bring or, or shoot the gun. Um, that's the last thing that's going to be on their mind. So don't fight technology. Be creative. Embrace it. Don't make it about a limit of ducks. Make it about the M&Ms and the peanut butter and jelly sandwich and let them blow a call. And, you know, that sounds terrible. Just make it about fun and hook everybody on all those things that, that we're interested in and we can all remember our first hunt, and if only we could all experience the joy on every one of our hunts as we did that first time. So just keep it fun, keep it lighthearted, and uh, try. There you go. That's some great advice from Joel Bryce with Delta Waterfowl. If you want to find out more about this organization and read this very interesting report, go to their website. It's deltawaterfowl.org. The website again, deltawaterfowl.org. Joel, thanks for sharing this with us on America Outdoors Radio. You're welcome. Thanks for the opportunity. Ray's Harbor Unders makes the performance-based layer clothing you want and need. Whether you work, hunt, hike, fish, run, or ride in the great outdoors, if you work up a sweat, Gray's Harbor Unders are for you because their unique dual-layer fabric removes moisture from your body and keeps your skin dry, even when the outer layer is completely wet. It's a base layer like no other. Get you some at ghunders.com. That's ghunders.com for the best performance-based layer you'll ever wear. Master Marine in Mount Vernon, Washington specializes in fishing and fun. We offer seven brands of boats, including Osprey, Sea Sport, Sea Dory, Tomcat, Lund, Weldcraft, and Thunderjet. We also offer Suzuki, Yamaha, and Mercury Motors. In other words, no matter what you're fishing for, we've got the boat for you. Drop by Master Marine at 330 East Blackburn Road in Mount Vernon to see what's on the lot or go online to mastermarine.com. That's mastermarine.com. Invasive species are organisms that are non-native to an ecosystem. They outcompete native species and reduce the quality of our resources. We can all prevent the spread by following the simple clean, drain, and dry steps. Clean all watercraft, trailers, and outdoor equipment. Drain all water from boat live wells, motors, ballast tanks, and bilges. And lastly, thoroughly dry all equipment and gear. Do your part to preserve our amazing outdoor heritage for future generations. Low-limit saltwater salmon fishing got you down? Don't be sad. Head to the mighty Columbia River and get into the great steelhead and salmon fishing going on this year. Mike Salazar with Salt to Summit Guide Service is the man to go fish with. He's got over 25 years experience and knows how to catch a limit of fish. In fact, he's so confident in your success, he'll guarantee a fish. Book your Columbia River trip now at salttosummit.com. That's salt, then the number two, then summit.com.
Be sure to attend the Monroe Sportsman Show April 7th through the 9th at the Evergreen State Fairgrounds with tons of vendors offering big discounts, a lineup of expert speakers, and a stock trout pond for the kids. This show will be fun for the whole family. Admission is only $6 and kids under 12 are free. So be sure to attend the Monroe Sportsman Show presented by Puget Sound Angler Snow King Chapter and sponsored by Three Rivers Marine with support from the TPA Fund of Snohomish County. Find out more at MonroeSportsmanShow.com. RCI X-Rail has the high-capacity magazine or accessory you need for your shotgun. Whether you're using it for tactical purposes, competitive shooting, or special hunts, where maximum round counts don't apply. RCI's X-Rail lets you get more rounds downrange faster because you don't have to reload as often. And their performance shop will race up your shotgun by opening the port for fast loading, lightening the trigger, or adding sights and accessories. RCI X-Rail is your shotgun solution because they are the shotgun people. Find out more at xrailbyrci.com. You're back with America Outdoors Radio, and this segment is sponsored by the American Shooting Journal. It is the magazine that every month covers the firearm scene. I'm not talking just about the firearms themselves. I'm talking about how to use the firearms, tactical operations, self-defense, shooting sports, and so much more. Look for the American Shooting Journal on a newsstand near you. We start off by telling you about an important safety recall. Walther Arms has found a problem with their 9mm concealed carry pistol, also known as the Walther CCP. You see, it can potentially discharge if dropped whether the manual safety is engaged or not. Because of that, Walther has initiated a voluntary recall because of the possibility of a drop fire occurring. If you own a Walther CCP, please do not load or fire your pistol and contact Walther immediately to arrange to have your pistol upgraded free of charge. You can find out more details at their website, waltherarms.com. That's waltherarms.com. Turning to the tournament trail, the 2017 Geico Bassmaster Classic, arguably the highest profile bass tournament in the world, is in Texas. 52 top anglers are fishing at Lake Conroe, a 21,000-acre reservoir known for giving up bass over 10 pounds. The weigh-ins will take place 48 miles down the road at Houston's Minute Maid Park, an event thousands of bass fishing enthusiasts are expected to attend. So... Who are the favorites this year? Mike Iaconelli, the charismatic bass angler who has qualified for 18 Bassmaster Classics, is thought to be a contender, as is Todd Faircloth, a well-respected Texas angler who lives just two hours from Lake Conroe. Greg Hackney and Keith Combs are two anglers predicted to have a great chance to win, and... Alton Jones, a Texas native and former Bassmaster Classic champion, is Bassmaster's odds-on favorite to win the big dance this year. But you know what? You never, ever know what's going to happen. So if you get a chance, tune in to ESPN2. They are broadcasting the Bassmaster Classic live and catch the action. Finally, do you remember that TV show that was on a few years ago? It was titled When Animals Attack. Well, courtesy of the Outdoor Hub, we've got our version of that for you this week. The story involves a man and a Jake turkey who came together for a fatal encounter in Michigan last month. Apparently, the man's girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, yes, you heard that right, and son were all outside of the house when a Jake turkey strutted into the backyard. They alerted the man inside the home who decided to show everyone that turkeys were harmless, and he started feeding the turkey a handful of bread. Well, things worked out at first. The bird was interested in having some free chow, but then things took a turn for the worse. And in the words of the man, the bird went, quote unquote, ape crazy. The turkey reportedly jumped up on the man's shoulders, gripped those shoulders with his talons, and then started beating him on the head with its wings. Instincts kicked in in terms of self-defense at this point from the man. He grabbed the turkey by its legs and threw it to the ground. He then ran over and kicked that Jake in the chest. The man might have been okay at this point from a legal point of view, but he apparently never heard the phrase, can't stop the flop, because when the bird continued to flop around on the ground, 
The suspect, now he's not just a man, he's a suspect, delivered one more fatal blow to the chest of that Jake Turkey. A Michigan Department of Natural Resources officer was called to the scene, and after hearing the story, he cited the man. See, that's why we called him the suspect. There is no word on whether the citation was for taking a turkey out of season or maybe it was for using excessive force. I guess we'll have to follow up on this one. Next up on America Outdoors Radio, if you're like me, you probably enjoy shooting. And when you're out at the range, let's be honest, shooting paper targets... It's not necessarily the most fulfilling thing in the world. With steel targets, at least you get some immediate feedback of whether you're hitting or not when you hear that clang. But how about this? How about targets that go boom when you hit them? Those are targets that are manufactured by Tannerite Sports out of Oregon State. And with us here to tell you about them is a longtime user of their product line, Keith Warren, who's coming at us out of Texas today. Keith, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me on. And I'll tell you, I discovered Tannerite years ago when I was on a prairie dog shoot up in North Dakota. And uh, I fell in love with the product. And then uh, I was at the SHOT Show cruising uh, the aisles, and all of a sudden I saw the bright orange sign. I walked over there and said, I got to get to know y'all because this product makes shooting just so much more fun for anybody. Let's talk about exactly what Tannerite is. If if folks see it on the store shelves, they're basically going to see a little plastic jar with an orange cap on it and some powder inside. And... They just assume if you shoot it, it's going to go kaboom, but it's a little more complicated than that. Let me first off address it. Tannerite is one of the safest products that you can use, period. You need to use it as the instructions say. It's just like a, a firearm. You use it like the instructions say, okay? You don't use it irresponsibly. Tannerite is a product that actually is two products. It's a binary compound where you mix two products together, and it creates the, the product that will eventually go boom. The only way it goes boom is if you shoot it with a high-powered rifle that has a lot of velocity. Okay, now there, what, what happens is it's extremely safe. You can't burn it. Uh, you can take it and you can throw it in a campfire, and it's not going to burn. You can take a, a cigarette lighter to it and try to burn it. It won't burn. The only way it'll go boom is to be hit by a high-powered rifle a bullet. Okay, and you mix them together. There's a mixing jar that comes with it. Mix those two ingredients together to see uniform color. And then all of a sudden you pour it back in the original container and you close it up. The original container, Tannerite, is a bright orange label, so you can't miss it. Right. And then what you do is you put it 100 yards away. Make sure you put it 100 yards away. You wear your eyes. You wear hearing protection. And then you shoot it, like I said, from 100 yards away. And it will go boom when you hit it. There won't be a doubt in your mind. Now, somebody may say, well, what? What fun is that? Well, that is a lot of fun. And for new shooters, <laughs> new shooters love it because it is instant gratification, so much more so than shooting a target or even a steel target where you hear the ding. No, here you're going to get a big boom. Well, that does sound like a ton of fun. Let's talk about the legality of using Tannerite. Is it legal in all 50 states? It is legal in every state except Maryland. If somebody has got any questions about whether it's legal or not, you can go to the Tannerite website or check with your local law enforcement agencies. I mean, there's a lot of law enforcement agencies that are using it themselves. Right. And uh, Tannerite has actually got almost like a continuing education program with law enforcement agencies, making sure that they're aware of how safe the product really is. And so videos, a lot of people get all these crazy ideas and they think Tannerite is going to, you know, cause a great big fire. Well, it's not going to cause a fire. It's impossible to cause a fire. Tannerite is one of the safest products there is, but there are people that use it incorrectly, just like they use a vehicle incorrectly or a lawnmower incorrectly. Anything else, you're supposed to use it as intended. All right. Well, we are starting to run short on time, but uh, one other note regarding legality for our Western state listeners. There are restrictions from time to time on BLM properties and U.S. Forest Service properties, so check with your local ranger office about that. Uh, And again, just like Keith said, use it responsibly. If you're going to be shooting Tannerite anywhere near your neighbors, let them know in advance that that's what's going on so they don't start freaking out and think that something else is going on instead. But Tannerite, absolutely ton of fun. Really will will make your next range experience a great one. In terms of where to buy it, I know you can get it at Gander Mountain Stores, Academy Sports Stores, and lots of gun shops all over the country. What's the website we can steer people to as well? But just log in and, and Google Tannerite. I mean, go to the Tannerite website. It's available at retailers all over the place. And I mean, 
Don't be misled by imitators because there are some imitation products out there that are not as safe as Tannerite. Tannerite is the original reactive <laughs> rifle target. And, uh, I mean, it's something that I think everybody should try it. Keith, thanks for sharing this with us on America Outdoors Radio. You bet. We hope you enjoyed this week's broadcast. If you like to attend sportsman shows, there are a few taking place in our greater listening area to include the 41-year-old Fred Hall Show at the Del Mar. It is San Diego's biggest boat show and biggest outdoor recreation event of the year. Find out more at fredhall.com. The Great Alaska Sportsman Show will be underway later this week. The four-day show starts March 30th, goes through April 2nd. It is Alaska's biggest sportsman show, taking place at the Sullivan and Ben Bokey Arenas in Anchorage, and it's going to feature, just like the Fred Hall Show, a whole bunch of great seminars, family attractions, and hundreds of exhibitors. And finally, there's a brand new show. Show. It's taking place in Monroe, Washington. It's being put on by the Snow King chapter of Puget Sound Anglers, and it's going off at the Evergreen State Fairgrounds April 7th through the 9th. While you're on the web, check out our website at americaoutdoorsradio.com. We're also on Facebook at America Outdoors Radio, and we're doing a giveaway there, so be sure to like our page and check that out. And don't forget to tune in online on WRVO Radio. They carry not just this show, but our sister show, Northwestern Outdoors Radio, and 30-plus other radio shows, too. The website for that one, renovioloutdoors.com. Spring is definitely here, folks, and I don't know about you, but I'm glad it is. I hope the good Lord blesses you during this Easter season, and I also hope that you get out there to enjoy some of the springtime activities waiting for you. Remember, it's your country and you're outdoors. 